It's about to come down to the Breeders' Crown. On October 29th, Woodbine Racetrack will be the host for the 2011 edition of these rich and important races, which always wield great influence on the Dan Patch Awards Balladay. Hi everyone, I'm John Pavlock. Welcome back to Ion Harness Racing. Since its inception in 1984, the Breeders' Crown has provided some of the sport's greatest moments and has decided who would be the sport's champions in countless races. The man behind it all is Tom Charters, the president of the Hamiltonian Society, who recently gave our Ken Weingartner a State of the Breeders' Crown interview. Actually condensed it this year. We had two extra overnights last year, and uh, this year we just went with 12 the 12 Breeders' Crown races, no, uh, nothing to pad the schedule or uh, uh, give people even a break. So it's going to be bang, 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 and uh, great racing, great races after great races. Of course, the real surprise when we opened the box yesterday was see you at Peelers being uh, back in uh, at the races, which I think is welcomed by all fans and everybody in the industry. This coming Monday, following the completion of the Breeders' Crown eliminations, the U.S. Trotting Association will unveil the official Breeders' Crown website, which will contain exclusive stories, statistics, photos, videos, and a place to download free official past performance program pages, courtesy of TrackMaster. Look for the banner on the USTA's homepage and click on it to follow the Breeders' Crown action. The United States Trotting Association is your place to find out more information on the standard bred breed and the exciting sport of harness racing. Want to own a racehorse? Become a licensed driver? Or find records of a retired standard bred you've started riding? Visit our comprehensive website to learn more about what the USTA can do for you. See you at Peelers is apparently on the comeback trail. The super filly, who was knocked out of action by a virus affecting her heart and lungs, qualified on October 14th with driver Marcus Johansson and the heart monitor in tow. Her future is back on track and the Breeders' Crown is in her focus. Jimmy Tactor recently spoke with Ken Weingartner moments after she came off the track following a 154-1 qualifying mile at Freehold Raceway. Well, I think she, she did a very good qualify. I mean, you know, Marcus uh, was very pleased the way she felt. And, uh, uh, you know, she's, uh, he said they felt like she had uh, at least a second left in the tank. And, uh, I mean, nice and straight. The sport's leading performer, the trotter Sandpail, prepped for the Breeders' Crown with a sharp victory in an overnight at Woodbine this past Saturday, where he won for the sixth straight time, this one in 155. Driven by Randall Waple, Sandpail grabbed the lead with ease soon after the quarter, and the seven-year-old son of San Pellegrino served notice that he's a solid Breeders' Crown favorite. And it's Sandpail opening up three nights now as they come into the stretch. Tall Cotton emerges from the middle in second. Far outside in third, trots up Lucky Jim, and way out wide coming on late as Swordfish. Sandpail brings them into the stretch and into the teeth of the wind. He's there by three, and they're not going to touch Sandpail again. Six in a row for Sandpail. Sandpail two likes the best. Driving tournaments are always popular with the fans, and the latest was contested this past Saturday at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, where a $50,000 purse drew the best in the Keystone State. Brett Miller set the pace by streaking to a win in the first leg and virtually went wire to wire by winning three of nine heats, including this victory in the final division of the evening. Dave Pallone finished second, and Mike Simons finished third. It's satire, life of ease, art glass, satire taking over with Brett Miller, satire with the trip, gets up for the victory, and Brett Miller with that win is going to cinch the Pennsylvania East-West Drivers Challenge title. The real winner was Charity. The Susan G. Komen Foundation for the Cure and Marley's Mission both benefited from the tournament. In Illinois, hopes for expanded gaming at the state's racetracks and the Springfield State Fair were dashed by Governor Pat Quinn, who said the people didn't want or need a major expansion of gaming in the state and that the tracks didn't need it because they were being subsidized. Well, I think horse racing and related businesses to it uh, right now are receiving generous support from the state. In August of this year, they got $141 million dollars. Uh, under the current law, 
they may get as much as $60 million in this fiscal year, uh, both for the horsemen and for the tracks. I think that's uh, something that we can keep an eye on. It's uh, transparent and open. I don't think we've heard the last of uh, slots at racetracks in Illinois, however. Rosecroft Raceway will return to live racing action tomorrow night and is wasting no time by joining the USDA's strategic wagering program. The Maryland Racetrack will offer $2,500 guaranteed Superfectas on October 21st, 22nd, and 28th. For more information, handicapping tips, and free program pages for these and other guaranteed wagers, visit handicapping.ustrotting.com. The sport lost a Hall of Fame driver, trainer, and a true gentleman when Gene Regal died at age 83 this past Monday in his native Greenville, Ohio. He developed many stars, and just a partial list includes Arnie Almerhurst, Jay Time, Leah Almerhurst, Troublemaker, Life Sign, Western Hanover, and Arts Place. Regal was inducted into the Ohio Hall of Fame in 1987 and into the Living Hall of Fame in Goshen, New York in 1991. He will be mourned, but memories of his great skill and winning personality will be cherished for years to come, as long as horses trot or pace. That's it for now. Next week, we'll look back at the Breeders' Crown eliminations and look forward to the finals at Woodbine Racetrack on our next edition of Eye on Harness Racing.